I just sit? Oh. Mm-hmm. Right. Got chapter three to read. Shush. Polly! Cried out the girl. You did it! You said it! Oh, what a clever girl! I could kiss you! But she didn't quite know how to. Go on then. Polly's beak looked rather sharp. So she let the pullet fly down fly down to the ground and ran to tell the other children. Polly ran after her. Abigail found Prudence feeding Benjamin. Poo, poo, called Abigail. Called Abigail. She did it. She said it. Polly said it. Bob came up carrying Fatso. What did Polly say? He asked. She said, eat a Weetabix. Why did she say that? Asked Bob. Because I've been saying it to her over and over again about a thousand times. Why? Because I wanted to teach it to her. Why? To see if she could talk like a parrot. Why? Said Bob. Oh, you silly little boy, Bob, said Prudence. Stop your why, why, why. Why? Said Polly. <gasps> the, ch the three children stared at the bird. Did you hear that? Said Prudence in a hoarse, hoarse whisper. Polly said it too. Bob said it about four times. And then you said it about three times, said Abigail. And she got it. Oh, Prue, do you see what this means? Polly's got the trick now of listening to what's said and repeating it. She squashed on her heels in front of the pullet. Eat a Weetabix, she said. Eat a Weetabix, said Polly. Why? said Abigail. Why? said Polly. Because it's nice with milk and not the brown sugar, said Bob. He waited expectantly for the bird to repeat his sentence. Polly stayed silent. She didn't say it, he grumbled. Stupid bird. I bet I could teach Fatso to talk more than what she's done. And he stopped off back to the farmhouse. His mother was in the kitchen cooking when Bob came in holding the hamster up before his face and saying it to it, over, saying, it saying to it in an earnest voice, My name is that so over and over again. What are you doing, Bob? his mother said. Teaching him to talk, like Abby's chicken. What do you mean? Abby's chicken can talk. Oh, you silly little boy, Bob, said his mother. Who ever heard of a talking chicken? Who ever heard of a talking chicken? Prudence was saying excitedly to her elder sister as they stood by the rabbit hutch. What shall you teach her to say next, Abby? Her name, I suppose, said Abigail. She squatted down again in front of the pullet. Pretty Polly, she said. Come on, Prue, you say it too. Ready? One, two, three. And together the sisters chanted Pretty Polly a dozen or so times till Abigail squeezed Prudence's arm to stop. They waited. Then, Pretty Polly, said the pullet, as clear as a bell. They looked at one another with shining eyes. Then Abigail, remembering the scene in the pet shop, and forgetting that, in fact, Polly was only aware of the sound and not the sense of words, said, What's your name? There was no, there was no answer. Say it again, whispered Prudence. And Abigail said it again and again and again. When at last she fell silent, Polly put her head on one side, shook it a little bit as if, as if to clear her thoughts, and then said, What's your name? Abigail frowned, thinking. She only says what I say, she thought. How do I get her to answer? Her glance fell on the biscuit tin in which Benjamin's rabbit mixture was kept. Of course, a reward for food. A, a, a reward of food. That was the way. She opened the tin and took out a little hand, handful of the stuff. Polly watched. Chuck, she said hopefully, but Abigail didn't. Aren't you going to give it to her, Abby? Said Prudence. She's been so clever. Wait a minute, said Abigail. Just keep quiet a minute, Prue. Don't say anything. She sat on the ground, her back against the leg of the old table on which the rabbit hut stood. Polly waited between her outstretched feet, silent, watching the cupped hand. What's your name? said Abigail. What's your name? said Polly. Abigail shook her head. What's your name? she said again. Eat a Weetabix, said Polly. Chuck! <laughs> Patiently, Abigail continued to answer the question over and over, but she only received the same two replies, sometimes varied with a why, and with lots of requests to chuck but she never got the answer she wanted. Still, the teacher kept on, and still the pupil kept hoping to be rewarded, till at last, Prudence grew tired of keeping quiet and went away. I won't be beaten, thought Abigail. If only she'll say the right thing just once, and then I make enough fuss of her. I'm sure that will be the, the breakthrough. What's your name? She said for the 50th time. And Pretty Polly said, Pretty Polly, clever girl, cried Abigail. Quickly, she stretched forward her arm and opened her hand and allowed the pullet to peck hungrily away at the food. With the other hand, she stroked the tiny, the tight, tight shiny feathers on her barred back. Clever girl, she said, clever girl. 
And when the food was finished, Abigail took some more from the tin and prepared to go through the whole lengthy performance again. But this time, as soon as she asked the question, the pullet not only answered correctly, but in such a way as to prove to Abigail that here was a chicken beyond her wildest dreams, a chicken to rival any parrot in the land. What's your name? asked the teacher. And the pupil answered, Pretty Polly, clever girl.